Hey, it's Nate again with another little lattice tool trick. So I've got a half a cylinder here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and mess it up. And just since we're using the lattice tool in this, I'm going to use the lattice tool to mess it up. I'll create a little 2x2, two two, select my lattice points, and I'm just going to shove it. Uh, I've just got my soft select on, I'm going to shove it randomly over there to the right. Uh, and I'll delete my history just so I don't have that lattice sitting there. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this back to being a perfect half of a cylinder. And you might think, well, that's pretty easy. You can just use the lattice tool again, right? And you'll just shove it to the left. Well, if I put a lattice tool on, and I did a 2x2, two two, I have a hotkey for that, um, select my lattice points and shove it over, there's really not a way to get accurate with it. Um, this line's always not going to be completely perfect. I'm going to be eyeballing it. I might get it really close, but then I look from another angle and it's it's a little bit off. Um, so what I want to show you is how you can use the last tool to actually get some pretty accurate shapes um, alongside uh, pinning your translation tool. So if I hold D and V while I move my translate tool, I can actually pin it to avert on my object. Now, using this, because I happen to have figured out the center of my object using this vert, I'll just hold and pin that vert. Now we're back to a perfect half cylinder, so I can delete my history, and that's what it looks like. So, you might think, like, okay, that's all well and good, but what if I don't have this vertice right in the center? Well, here's a simple trick. Hopefully you're already thinking this as I'm showing you. Um, but if I don't know where the center point is between these things, it's very easy to find. I'll just take a couple of edges, bridge them, and then I'll just evenly divide them. So I'm going to use my insert edge loop tool, and I'll say I want to do equal distance or uh, multiple edge loops, and I'll set my edge loop to only one. And when I click, it's going to go right in the middle. Newer versions of Maya have really cool tools that do all kinds of other versions of this, but the idea is you just want to split something down the center. So I know that's the middle. And now I can do the exact same thing. So I'll put a lattice on this. There's a lattice with a 2x2. Two two. I'll select my lattice points and I'll pin my manipulator to the center of, oops, the center object there. Let's do that one more time. I'm going a little crazy. There we go. And then I can move uh, while holding D and V uh, and holding V to, sh uh, to translate, I'll move this point over the middle point. And you can see here again we've got our perfect half a cylinder back to normal. So this is a rare case, right? Like you're not always going to have a half a cylinder. It's like what kind of objects can I, am I really going to model with this? But hopefully you'll start finding lots of different uses um, where you're trying to fit a strange shape into another strange shape. Um, and the last tool can really come in handy. So another example here is, let's say I just have an arch of some kind. And I'm going to delete the rest of these faces. In fact, just to show that I don't have to have this perfect kind of 90 degree angle from you know this edge up to this edge, it's, that's a perfect 90 degree angle if I had drawn that out right, um, I'll go ahead and just delete a couple more random faces. So if I wanted to maintain the sort of, uh, if you will, Bezier curve, like mathematically correct whatever of this arch, and have it match from this point to that point, um, you know, just moving it over and kind of trying to scale it and just hoping you get it right, or like trying to pin just this edge over to the side and then moving it up and then hoping you get, it's, it's just not worth it. So again, I'll just put a lattice on this, grab my lattice points, I'll pin these up, and then I can just pin this over, and there's my curve. And it's mathematically correct for whatever that means to you. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. So lots of weird situations you can use this in.